Uh, I, as you all know, that uh, we just uh, finished the first round of uh, a long debate, open debate in the Security Council. My understanding there will be about 50 speakers, including those who will be representing groups, which means the entire international community will be expressing itself through this debate. In our statement, we reflected accurately the uh, level of anger and frustration of the Palestinian people from this massive onslaught by the Israeli occupying authority everywhere in Jerusalem, in uh, Nablus, in Ramallah, in Jenin, in El Khalil, everywhere, including those who are besieged in the Gaza Strip. And this message, similar uh, in its accuracy of uh, transmitting the feeling of our people that President Abbas uh, uh, delivered in the General uh, Assembly. And also, many speakers, including the representative of the SG, Tor Winsland, uh, almost uh, accurately reflected the danger of what the Israeli occupying authority is doing by pushing the Palestinian people back to the wall. Our people will not break. Our people will not submit or surrender. Most likely what will happen, some kind of resurrection. And the Israeli occupying authorities and the paralyzed council, which I was telling them, what are you going to do? You can do a lot of things. Are you going to do it? And of course, you don't know whether that message is resonating with them or they might think that I am, uh, you know, threatening. Threatening or not, you will see our action in the coming days of the seriousness that we'll show. We spent almost two years since the arrival of Biden, the Biden administration in the Security Council in being reasonable and coming to the Council where others have a veto power, meaning they're strong here. And if you do not elevate yourself to the level of responsibility in the place where you are strong, you are forcing me to go to the General Assembly. And if you force me to do so, I will. And when I go there, I can deliver. And I have done that in the past. So my duty is to defend the rights of the Palestinian people in the best possible way. And my duty is in the place where I am the strongest, such as the General Assembly, is to get the maximum I am able to get for defending the rights of the Palestinian people. So this is the atmosphere of the discussion. And then I raised also the issue, if there are discussions and debates of the legal implications of a prolonged occupation and the character of this occupation in light of reports by Amnesty International and Human Rights Watch and others, then we are considering, you know, letting the competent authority, the ICJ, to uh, look into these things and make the ruling because they are more qualified than all of us to deal with these illegal issues. This is what I wanted to share with you. If you have questions, by all means, and Edith, you have the first you know, question to ask. Uh, two follow-up questions. How close is the Palestinian Authority to the abyss of going over, and how close are you to going to the General Assembly to ask for a referral to the International Court of Justice? Uh, the only thing I can tell you is that all these issues are into play. I am not a forecaster. I am a diplomat that closely understands the reality of the Palestinian people 
and the brutality of the Israeli occupying forces. I transmit these elements to the Security Council and to the General Assembly with a call, act, act, do something. And the longer they keep not acting and saying, wait, and they say there is no shortcut to the two-state solution, but the 55 years is the path that we have to follow, to follow. If it was an occupation of one or two years and you say that it is too, short, too quick to end it, then we can talk about three years and four years. But after five, 55 years, you tell me that there is no shortcut to the two-state solution, this is too much. So therefore, now, in a responsible way, we are the creative one. We came through the summer until now, admit the state of Palestine, it's our natural right and legal right to be a member state at the United Nations. Do it as an investment in peace. Do it as an investment in protecting the two-state solution. They're not. Then if we move, I don't know when, but possibly soon, in the to trigger the mechanisms to uh, ask the ICJ to rule on these issues, then they should blame no one except themselves for dragging their feet. We are trying everything possible, peaceful, legal, political, civilized, through mechanisms that were created by the West mainly. And if you don't, if even if you try to stop me from doing that, and I don't think that you can stop me in the General Assembly, then don't blame anyone except yourself. I am trying my best to find peaceful ways in order to put an end to the tragedy of the Palestinian people and to end this occupation and to live in freedom and dignity. And we are not there. And we, what we see is a massive uh, aggression by the occupying authority and by the reports of OCHA. The highest number of Palestinians killed is going to be in 2022, including children. Is that acceptable? It's not acceptable. So we are trying, but others, truly speaking, they are not trying enough. It is the mighty Security Council. The mighty Security Council can do things, but it is not. It adopts resolution, it adopted resolutions, but it's not implementing them. It is high time to implement them, or otherwise you are pushing us to look for other places where things can be done. Okay, yes. Thank you, Ambassador. Uh, the Arabic summit is going to be held in Algeria in a couple of days. President Mahmoud Abbas will be there. Do you have any expectations or hopes from this summit? Thank you. Let me, first of all, we uh, appreciate what uh, Algeria uh, has been doing in trying to uh, help us to unify our ranks. Uh, that is uh, something uh, to commend the Algerian people and the Algerian leadership and the Algerian president, President Taboon. And we sincerely hope that the declaration of Algiers to see uh, implementation and to see it uh, very soon, we will work very closely with the Algerian leadership uh, to that end. Uh, we are, as also was mentioned in the debate, all are uh, praising Algeria for that role that it played. Edith, thank you. You don't want us, I just wanted to say one sentence about something that has been discussed a lot around here. And I want to, to say to those who are going gung-ho, whether in the Security Council, the Third Committee and other places, uh, about uh, anti-Semitism. Let me just read to you one sentence reflecting our position. Do not allow the legitimate fight against 
anti-Semitism, the legitimate fight against anti-Semitism, to be used and abused to shield Israelis' illegitimate policies and actions. Record that. Thank you.